Hello friends. Okay, I'm so excited that you're here. This means that you're gonna be learning embroidery with me. And there's a few things I wanna go over before we get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is how much fun we're gonna have. This is meant to be tons of fun. And we're also not gonna do our project all at once. Embroidery is one of those crafts that sometimes takes a while to do. And that's a good thing because at the end we have this beautiful project, but sometimes we're going to have to put our stuff away and come back to it and we're not going to be able to finish our project all at one time. And that's okay. And that's what's fun about it is that it takes a while and it's fun and we learn so much in the process. So I want you to keep the bag that all of your project came in and you can keep all of your stuff stored inside of there so that it doesn't make a mess and so also we don't lose anything. And the second thing that I want to remind you is that it's okay to ask for help. Sometimes these projects are a little bit hard and we're learning something new. So if you need to take a second and go ask an adult for help, that's what I'm sure they're there for. I'm here to do my best to make it so that you can do this all by yourself. But I also think it's okay to ask for help sometimes too. And then the last thing that we're going to talk about is that in your video, it's going to be broken up into something called chapters. And I'm going to be mentioning quite a few times that maybe it's a good time to pause the video if you're still working on something. Don't get too discouraged if I'm a little bit further ahead of you. That's going to happen. I've been doing this for a long time. So mine might look different and I might be going a little faster than you. So if you ever feel like I'm getting too far ahead of you, you can pause the video and then you can come back to it after. But also, if you're working on something and you feel like, you know what, I've got this. I don't need to watch her anymore. All of the sections of the video are broken up into something called chapters. So if you're done and you're like, I've got this, I know how to do this back stitch, you can pause the video, finish what you're working on, and then you can move to the next chapter and you won't miss anything in between. You're just going to move on to the next thing. Okay. So sometimes we're not going to be at the exact same point. Sometimes you're going to want to pause me and you're just going to want to work on it by yourself. And then you're going to come back and you can find the chapter that you're on. So it should all be organized for you and you can see it all laid out and then you can come back and you can find your spot and you can put all your stuff away and work on it later. So we're gonna get started and I can't wait to teach you embroidery. All right, let's get started on our rainbow embroidery stitch sampler kit. So a stitch sampler just means that you're gonna learn nine different stitches with this pattern. So you're gonna learn a variety of different stitches and it's gonna really teach you a bunch of stuff that you need to know and you can continue on in your embroidery journey. So some stitches are gonna be a little bit more difficult and some are gonna be a little bit easier. Um, and we're gonna start with some of the easier ones and move on as we go. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to need to get your fabric into your hoop. So we are going to take apart this hoop. You've got your inner hoop and your outside hoop. And you're gonna start by laying the inner hoop, the round closed hoop underneath just like that. And then you want to loosen this screw here so that you can open it nice and wide. And then you're just going to lay it on top, push down till it's flat on the ground. And then it's going to be time to tighten. So you're just going to pull the edges of your fabric like this, kind of tug on them so that they pull this part of the fabric nice and flat. So just going around in a circle and kind of pulling on the edges. And then as you do that, you can tighten this hoop here. So just going around in a circle. You wanna get it nice and tight. And for tightening the top of this hoop, you can get a screwdriver and you can turn it so you can ask an adult for help or if you feel comfortable using a screwdriver, you can tighten it. The tighter your hoop is at the top, the better your fabric stays inside of your hoop. So that, and the tighter your fabric stays inside your hoop, the easier it is to stitch. Okay, so that's step one. Once you've got your fabric in your hoop, you're actually gonna be ready to start stitching soon. So I mean, if you need to pause the video and get that all in there, this is the time to pause it and then we'll see you back once your fabric is in there and nice and tight. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do to get started with getting our thread ready is we're gonna pull it out of this little bundle and you're always gonna pull from the end that has the number on it, okay? So you're pulling from the bottom of this end. It's gotta be the end, which is the bottom, okay? And when you're pulling it out, I want you to pull out what looks like four of these loops, okay? So you're gonna pull it out and it's gonna go one, two, three, four, okay? Four little loops. 
I'm going to cut your thread and then you've got this pretty long little piece of thread. And what we're going to do is we're going to split our strands in half. Okay. So this is a little bit more difficult part. So you're going to take it really slow. Once you've got your thread, if you haven't grabbed your thread yet, if you're still working on getting that, you can pause the video and then come back when you're ready. But if you are ready to go, you're going to take these little pieces of thread. And if you take your end, I'll show you on the other end. If you take your end and you kind of start to run your fingers along it like this, like this, you're going to see that there's actually six little strands all together six pieces of thread okay so we actually want to split that into two pieces of three so if you know how to divide you're going to take six and divide it by two you want two pieces of strands that's three on each side so you want to count three over here and three over here and once you have three on each side you're going to slowly really slowly pull them apart like this okay and you can kind of lay it down and just pull them really slowly and sometimes it'll start to twist you see how it's all twisting up there if I stop and I pull my part that's still together straight down straighten it out but if I go really really slow it works better if I try to go really fast I end up with knots okay so if I start to get a knot I'm gonna pull it down like that so it straightens it out I'm just gonna really slowly pull twisting a little bit but I'm just going to keep slowly pulling oh when it starts to get tough is when you know you need to straighten your end out so if it gets hard to pull it apart you want to slow down and pull that end and then it's just going to come apart so now you've got two pieces two long pieces okay and we're going to put one of them aside and we'll use it after I'm going to start with our first one okay so you just want to straighten it out a little bit Okay, if you're still taking your thread out of the bundle, you can pause me now and then you can come back. But if you're ready to move on, you've flattened out your thread. We're going to take our needle. And the nice thing about these needles, you want to push this up from the end with the little hole in it, which is called the eye. You're going to pull out your needle. This needle isn't super sharp. It can still hurt you, but it's not as sharp as a regular needle where it'll pop your skin. So don't push on the end, but it's definitely not as sharp as the other ones that you can get. And then this little guy is called a needle threader. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our needle, which I can't pick up with my fingers, nails. We're gonna pick up our needle threader. See there's this little hole in the end? That's called the eye of your needle. And you're gonna take this little needle threader and you're gonna put it through. And your needle's just gonna kinda of sit on there. And that's okay, put it down. And then you're gonna take this thread, your three strands of thread, and you're gonna push it through the needle thread, or that big hole, you're gonna put that through. Oops. Okay, if you're still trying to catch up to me, you can pause now, okay? So just, so we've got our needle through our needle threader and our thread through our needle threader, okay? Needle is hanging on here, thread is through there. And then what we're gonna do so we're just going to slide our needle off and as we slide our needle off our thread's going to go through that hole and then we take the end the short end or one end of our thread and we pull it through all the way through and then we pull our needle threader off of the thread and you've got this three strands now to get this so that it doesn't, the needle doesn't come off of your thread when you're stitching. We're gonna run it down. We're gonna take our thread until it's halfway, okay? See that, we've got thread on each side through, and they're gonna go all the way to the bottom until the two ends meet. You want those two ends together, okay? So now our two ends are together. They're pretty close to even. Okay, we want them as close to even as we can get them. And we're putting our six strands kind of back together because now we're gonna tie a knot in the end of this. 
Now, if you need help tying a knot from an adult, you can go ask someone. So you can pause it and ask them to tie these two ends together like this. So you're gonna, but if you wanna try for yourself, you're gonna hold the tip like this and you're gonna make a loop, okay? So I'll show you really slow. We're gonna like make this little loop shape, okay? So crossing it over. And then we're just gonna stick the end inside the loop, pull the loop over so that our thread is inside of our loop. Created kind of a knot. And then we're just gonna pull that loop closed, okay? Till it's nice and tight, okay? You're gonna pull it tight. And then you're gonna take your scissors, whatever scissors you have, and you wanna snip it so that it's nice and short. You just want your end to be short. If it, if it was a little longer, that's okay. You just wanna tie the end and then snip off the extra that you don't need. And then you should have your needle on your thread, but your needle can't come out because it's stuck in there, stuck inside. Okay, and then we're ready to start stitching. So you're gonna do that every time you need more thread. So right now you want your thread to be about this long, okay? Two times the width of your fabric, okay? Okay, the very last thing I wanna remind you of before we get started onto our stitching is that throughout this video, you are gonna run out of thread at different times than I do. And that's just gonna be dependent on how much you take and how much your, how big your stitches are. So I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial right now about how to tie off the thread at the back and get more thread. And it's gonna be annoying every time you have to get new thread. It annoys me every time too, but we just gotta be patient because if we have too much thread on our needle, it's just gonna get into a big knot at the back. So we have to take the right amount of thread. So I'm gonna show you how to tie it off in case you run out of thread before I do. And you're gonna see me throughout the video sometimes tying off my thread at the back before getting a new piece of floss, but don't forget to get more floss before you run out. So when you've got about this much thread left on your needle, that's the time to tie it off. Cause if you wait till you only have about this much, you're not gonna be able to tie a knot in that end. And then you've got a loose end and your stitching might come out. So I'm gonna show you the tutorial on how to close the stitches at the back so that they're nice and secure before getting a new piece of floss. Okay, I'm gonna show you on our little axolotl design. Now, if you have about this much thread left, that's about the time you need to tie your thread at the back. So the first way you can do this is you're just gonna take your needle and you're going to stick it underneath some of your other threads. You're gonna pull it up and it's gonna wrap that thread around those stitches. And part of doing that is gonna secure all your thread, okay? So if you wrap your, it around there three times, you are going to have a very secure little thread. Now, if you have a long thread and you want to, you can go underneath your stitches, oops, and then before you pull it around that loop, there's a little hole and you can stick your thread through that hole, either with using the needle or using your fingers, and pull it to create a knot, and then you can trim it. If you run out of thread, this is what you need to do every time you need to, before you get more thread, so that all of your threads are nice and secure and they don't come undone. And we're gonna start at the very beginning of our rainbow. So you can flip it over if you need to. You can put your needle through the back and you just push it through. So if we're starting at the front, we wanna go into this corner right here at the start, right here. So from the back, you're just sticking it in right there. Okay, and then we pull our thread up from the front and this is called a running stitch. So a running stitch is just a straight continuous stitch. So we're gonna go down, we're gonna pick a little distance. So I made mine about this wide. Okay, my first stitch, I'm gonna do go down. And you're gonna pull your first stitch down, okay? And then our next stitch, we have to do the same distance at the back, 
that we did at the front and do our next stitch. So I wanna make the same distance, like see how I went this far to this one? I wanna do that far to the next one. And I'm just gonna push it down, find my needle on the other side and pull it up, okay? And then for the running stitch, you keep going always forward. It's like you're taking a bunch of steps forward and then this one is your next stitch. And then you wanna do the same distance again, right? So we're at the back, I wanna do my next stitch from the back. Same distance we did before. All your stitches are the same distance, which can be a little bit hard and that's okay. It's not always easy. The more you do it, the better you'll get. So we want, and now we're going forward again. So we want the same distance. So trying to look and see how wide it is, how far to do our next stitch. And you're just following the rainbow from front to back. So we're going back to the back, pushing it down, and then pulling our needle up from the front. Going like this. And if you get a knot in your thread, which sometimes happens, if you feel a knot, you wanna stop. And sometimes you're gonna have to cut your thread out Cut, cut your thread, tie an end, tie your end, and you might have to um, restart and put your thread back onto your needle again. And I know it can be really frustrating. It happens to everyone who stitches. It even happens to me, and I've been stitching for a long time. So don't get too frustrated and don't feel bad because it happens to everyone. So we're just going to keep, we just have to restart with where we were when we put our thread on it. And I know that happens, so... I just wanted to warn you guys at the beginning, okay? If you haven't had anything like that happen, that's great. You can just keep going all the way around, doing the same spaced stitches. Sometimes when our thread gets a knot, it happens because we're pulling too fast. And that's okay. We just have to tie our knot off and start again. Okay, so we're at the very bottom now. We're gonna make, I'm gonna make my last stitch. I'm gonna come up right here and I'm gonna come down into my corner and then I'm done my first row. Take your needle and move to the other side of our rainbow and start on our next row. So if you weren't finished your thread and you were just ready to keep going, you can keep going. If you are still getting more thread for your needle, you can pause and come back when you're ready. So we're creating our little stitches. You can do these ones the same size as your last row, or you can do them a little smaller or a little bigger. And basically we're just practicing here how big the stitches are to try to get them even. So this is kind of like a practice, right? That's what a stitch sampler is. It's learning all the stitches and it's practicing them. So this running stitch is just a straight stitch. And if you were maybe sewing um, yourself something that you were trying to put two pieces of fabric together, you could use a running stitch. And 
Not every stitch is going to be perfect. Not every stitch is going to look exactly the same as the next stitch. And that's okay. We're trying to look, get them to look similar, but it's not always going to be perfect. And that's okay. Because if yours looks exactly like mine, then it's not unique to you. And that's okay if they're a little different. It's not supposed to look like mine because it's yours. All right, so I'm almost at the very bottom. I'm gonna make my last stitch into this corner. And then I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna fold it over, or I'm gonna turn it over. And I'm going to do what I did before where I'm putting my needle underneath one of my stitches and then I'm going to do it one more time underneath one of my stitches and then I'm going to take my needle through the loop that it creates. I'm going really slow so I don't pull my loop tight. I want to be able to find my loop and then I put my needle through my loop and pull it tight. And then I'm just going to snip my thread off my needle down there. And then here you are, you're done. If you wanna pull your edges a little bit to make your fabric come back tight into your hoop, you can pull the edges here if it feels like it's all loose and bubbly. You can pull it. Okay, and then we're done our first stitch. We're finished the running stitch. And now we're on to the next one. If you are not done your running stitch, you can just pause the video and come back to me when you're finished. But we're gonna, next up, we're gonna do our chain stitch. So it's another stitch that I'm gonna teach you. That's a very cool stitch and I think you're gonna love it, but we need to get our three strands again. So we're gonna pull our pink out and remember we're pulling out of our thing and you can kind of use your hoop as a guide for how much you need. So we're gonna put one, two, that's three loops and four and then we're gonna snip we've got a piece of thread this long and we need to get it into two threads so you still got this other pink one you're just gonna put that in a safe spot maybe back in the bag or somewhere um, and then we'll use it later for something else okay so right now we're just gonna do our pink strands. We're gonna split them in half. You might have used this one too when you needed more thread, but if you didn't, then it's sitting right there. So we're gonna take our split pink and we're gonna split it in half again. Going nice and slow. Remember, we gotta pull it straight if it starts to twist too much. Nice and slow. But otherwise we're gonna lay it down. We're just gonna smooth it out so that it's not as twisted, right? We're just gonna smooth it out a little bit. And if you're not using your needle, I'm gonna tell you where you can put your needle so that you don't lose it. You can stick your needle in the side of your fabric like that. That's a good place so that you don't lose your needle, okay? So while we're straightening out our thread, we can keep our needle in the side there because you don't wanna lose your needle and you don't want your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister to step on your needle. Okay, and then we're ready to thread it again. So we're gonna use our needle threader. Again, we're gonna put our needle through our needle threader. Okay, and I'm gonna lay it down if I need to. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stick it through my hole on my needle threader, right? Just like that, pull it a little bit so that it's somewhat through and then I'm going to pick up my needle and my needle threader with one hand each and then I'm going to hold it like on there and I'm going to pull it through. You might need to hold right here when you pull through so that it's and then you can pull the thread out of the needle threader and put it back in your pile and then remember we got to get our ends tied together so we're pulling our thread so that our needles in the middle and fold it over our thread. We've got our two ends together. And then we're gonna do what we did before where we create a loop. So we've got our two ends. We're gonna create a little circle, right? And we're gonna flip, 
take our end and put it through the circle. Okay, through the circle. And then once it's through the circle, we're gonna pull it tight. And that might create a little bit of thread at the end that's longer and that's okay. We just trim it off, make our knot nice and tight and trim it off. And then we're ready to get started on our chain stitch. So the chain stitch is gonna be one of the ones that it can be a little trickier, but it's also really fun to do. So we're gonna start by coming up. So see how this is where we came up last time? Right here, right at the start. This time we wanna come up a little further back. So we want to start just a stitch length away and we want to come up and pull our thread all the way through. And then this is the part where we need to go nice and slow. Okay, we want to take that thread, that needle, and we're going to actually put it down right beside our other stitch, right beside it. So they're side by side. And I want you to put your finger on top of the pink thread and then with your other hand, pull the thread until you see a loop. Okay, so don't let this thread go flat. You don't want it to go back through the thing. You want to keep your thumb on it and you want or something. You can put it flat on the table and pull and keep your one finger on it until you see that loop. Okay. And then where that loop is, you have to go up through the loop. So we can go to the back and we can look and see where we need to come up. We need to come up at the start of the rainbow, okay? So we can just put our needle right there. And when we come back up, we're gonna go up right there. And if your needle doesn't come up right through that loop, just move your loop and put it on it. Go like this. Just stick your loop on top of your needle. And then once your need thread is going through your loop, you're gonna pull it down, okay? Look at that, you've created like this little loop. But then we need to tack that loop down. We need to go back through our, thread, through our fabric and we need to push the end so that we keep our loop on our fabric. So we're gonna go on the other side of the loop. Right now you're, you're inside of the loop. You wanna be on the other side of the loop and push it down, okay? So you're gonna pull your needle back down through and it stitches over top of that little loop, okay? And then the next stitch, you have to go a little further. So you're gonna go from the back, you're gonna go a little further than where you started, okay? So like right here, which will bring your needle up a stitch away, okay? And you're kind of stitching backwards for this one because you have to go underneath that loop and through it and you're creating these little chains. So then you gotta go beside that last stitch, like that. And then you're gonna go from the back, you're gonna go forward a little bit again, right there. And you can put your needle through this way so that you're not, okay? So you're pushing it through your loop over and then coming back on the, the side, your other stitch. You can do either way. It's okay if you do either way. So then again, we're going forward a bit. If you're looking at your back, you're going forward. And then under, try not to get underneath of your running stitch, but if you hit it, that's okay. Just pull your needle back, come up again. It's gonna happen. Sometimes we hit our other stitches. Okay, and then we're gonna go down just right beside the other stitch. So they meet back up. Okay. And then another one forward at the back. Push our needle up, grab it from the front, go through, through and beside. 
Okay, so whenever you need more thread, you're just gonna pause your video and get more thread. But right now we're just gonna keep going till we run out of thread. And you're not gonna run out at the same time I'm gonna run out probably, so just keep going. If you need to go back and find the part of the video where I do show you how to get the thread, you can go back and do that if you need to. You can pause me. Underneath and then meeting up again. So we kind of have to go forward and then come back, right? Go underneath kind of looks like a braided hair a little bit. Or if you've ever made rainbow loom bracelets, it kind of looks like those too, doesn't it? So I'm going to be pretty close to needing new thread. And do you know why I'm gonna need more thread even though it still actually looks like I have a lot of thread on here. Let's look at it. So it looks like I have lots of thread, doesn't it? But we have to make sure we get our thread before it's too short. Because if I try to keep going, I'm gonna have such a little strand here that I'm gonna end up not being able to close my knot. So you wanna have at least the length of your needle left at the end. So I might do one more stitch and then we'll, so if my thread feels shorter than the length of my needle, then I'm time to tie the back, okay? If you get too close to the end, then you won't be able to tie the knot. So here, I've only got just about the length of my needle. So I'm gonna tie off just a little longer. So I'm ready to tie off before I get too short. So I've weaved it underneath one time, and then I'm gonna go under one more time through my loop, okay? All right, so when we have to restart, we've tied our little knot here, and now we have to start again. Now, how do we start again? We just pick up where we left off as if we hadn't taken a break. So we're gonna take our next stitch, and we're gonna put our thread, our needle in through there, up again and then putting it underneath. And then beside. Okay, and then forward a little bit. Underneath. Through. Back beside. And just keep going. Under. Underneath. through and then you're at the end right so if you have depending on the space you have left you're just going to do one more chain come up and then go down and you're gonna wanna do the other side or you can just leave it if you're like, you know what, that was a lot of work and I just wanna take a break from my chain stitches and try another stitch. You can take a break and you can go back and do it later or you can just leave it like that where you have the top of the rainbow finished. It's totally up to you. It's your embroidery so you can take a break if you want and not finish that bottom part. But we're gonna go back up and we're gonna keep going if you are wanting to keep doing the other side. 
So you're gonna come up at the bottom and we're gonna do the same thing. Instead of coming up in this corner, we're gonna do the same thing we did last time. We have to come up a little higher, right? Because we have to create that loop again, the same loop we did at the beginning, that tacked part, that very beginning. So we're gonna do, we go in right beside, we've gone up from the corner, go in beside right here. And we're holding our thumb on there so that we don't go all the way down. We've got this loop, we're gonna hold that loop flip it over and we're going to come up where we can see the top of the cloud okay and look oh mine isn't over my my loop isn't over my needle so i'm just going to take my loop and i'm going to fit it through sometimes it takes a second sometimes it gets stuck on the strands but we're just going to get the each side on there and then once my loop is done i'm going to pull my loop closed and then I'm gonna stitch down on the other side of that loop. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna come up right here. One more stitch forward, remember? Going forward past where our last stitch was. And then we're gonna go in the direction. We're gonna put our needle through so that our needle points towards the side we don't have stitches makes it easier if we're not running into other things, right? And then down beside. Cross. And beside. I'm going to show you guys if you do want go if you did do have stitches on the other side say you took a break from your chain stitch and you were coming back and you were going in the wrong other direction and you were like I keep hitting my other threads I don't know how what you can do is you can push your needle through there and then you can use your finger to push your needle up from the back so push on your fabric a little bit and it helps push your needle up to the sky so that you can get past the other stitches and not get stuck underneath of them but if you can, push your needle in the other direction so that it doesn't. And sometimes we're gonna snag things. I just hit that one. It's gonna be, it's always gonna happen. We just have to take a second, and redirect and move really slowly. It's the thing about embroidery is it's nice and slow. This is really good practice when you're learning your stitches. So you can do two rows, you can do one row. Oh, look at me. I'm almost out of thread and I almost kept going. So we've got to stop. We've got to realize we've only got one needle's length of thread. So we've got to go underneath our stitch. And if your thread is too short and you can't get through that loop, the loop closes before you can get to it, what you can do is you can just go underneath the same stitch a few times. Just keep wrapping it around. And as you wrap it around a few times, it's going to secure your stitch so it won't come out. And that's okay too. You don't have to go through the loop. You can just wrap it around. Okay. So I need a little bit more thread and I'll come back to you guys in a sec. Okay, and I'm ready to pick back up. So I've got my knot here, but I need, if I hadn't stopped, my next stitch would have gone, whoops. I've got my knot here, and my next stitch, if I hadn't have had to stop for my knot, I would have gone right here. Okay, so I'm just restarting exactly where I would have been if I hadn't had to get more thread. I'm gonna go down, and you know what sometimes tends to happen is you might get looped on here. That's okay, just Take a second, see if I'm stuck. Oh, that's so annoying. I know that's frustrating. And we just pull it out and we just try again. It's gonna happen, it happens all the time. And sometimes it can be really annoying. But we just have to fix it and try again. Oh, 
tried to show you last time and this time it happened again. Didn't even mean to do that. Okay, so we're almost at the end. Just finishing our chain stitch. To finish, we just go down right above our cloud, and to tie off at the back, we just go around our stitches. And if you saw last time, I don't you don't have to do through the loop, you can just wrap around three times around your stitches, and it'll secure if you're having trouble getting your needle through that loop. Okay, and then you're just gonna trim there and you're done okay so our next stitch is called the split stitch so we're going to do the same thing we're going to take our yellowy green color we're going to make four we're going to take four sections and then we're splitting our strands again we're finding three on each side we're just gently pulling and it's okay if you have trouble with this and you need help just bring it to your adult but I think really slow straightening it out and we flatten them out. Okay, so we've straightened out our thread and we're gonna do our needle threader again. Get our needle, and push it through. We're gonna stick our thread through our needle threader, just a little bit. And then we take our needle and we kind of have to hold this part on the metal part and pull so that it comes through. And then that's when we put our ends back together. So we meet up our ends, tie them back together. So creating that loop, create your loop, put it through your loop, and then pull. trim our end and then pull our needle so that it's right in the middle and it's all straightened out okay so the split stitch and again if you only want to do one row of your split stitch instead of two <clears throat> that's okay too you can start in the center or you can do the top or you can do the bottom and you can just do one row or you can do two that's up to you so we're gonna start right here in the corner if we're starting with just one row or two rows and we're gonna come up through our stitch or through our fabric and we're gonna stitch one stitch length so however long you want that to be it can be a little longer it can be a little shorter I'm gonna do mine kind of in the middle, maybe a little longer for this one. And I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna make one big, one normal stitch. And then I'm gonna go forward, forward one stitch along my line. And then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna go down through my stitch. So that's why it's called a split stitch. You're gonna kind of split your stitch in half and go down. And then you're gonna go forward again. 
And from the back, you have to go pretty far. You're gonna go all the way up to the top where you haven't stitched through. So it's a big jump. Okay. And then we're gonna stitch back down through again. And then up again, big jump at the back. And then back through splitting our strands. And you want to split about halfway. So this is the distance of your stitch. You want to go halfway through that stitch. Okay. Just in the very middle of it, which is about where your last one was. So we're going big stitch forward and then coming back and splitting it in half. All right. And then split it in half. So this one kind of looks like our chain stitch from before. It's just a different way of doing it. So they look similar, but they're different. Okay, and we're meeting up. God, splitting it in half. And it's kind of fun because you just split it right down the middle and go through. And if you're still behind me, that's okay. You can pause your video when you get to the end and then catch up but just take your time. You might run out of thread and need to get more. That's okay too. Split it in half and then go to there. And then we're almost at the end. We go up at the very corner and then I'm gonna split it in half and go down. And then I'm going to, to finish it, I'm going to come up from the back at the middle of it. So you can kind of find the middle of where it is at the back. Come up. Oh, and if your needle doesn't go through it, you can kind of fix it to go through. And then go back forward one more time to finish it so that it splits that last stitch in half. Okay. And then when we're at the back, I have a little bit of thread left on my needle so I can eat, jump over and I can start and then I'll just tie off in a few stitches. Or if you wanna get brand new thread right now, you can. But if you're ready to start, you can just move over. Or if you're just going with one, one row, that's okay too. So I'm gonna stitch. If you're going with one row, you can kind of scroll ahead and you can move on to your next stitch. I'm going to do shorter ones this time. And I'm just splitting my thread. Finding halfway. Oh, and I'm running out of thread. I can feel that it's short. So now that I have just one needle length left, I'm gonna go underneath my stitches, doesn't matter where. And if I have the space, I can go through my loop. If not, I can just run it around until it feels tight three, four times around my other stitches. And trim it up. Okay, I'm gonna get more thread and then I'll meet you guys back here. Okay, I've got more thread, so I'm just restarting and I'm going to start again by going up where I would have left off and then coming back, splitting my strands. And it's okay if you go outside of the rainbow line and you're say over kind of on the white area or you're right in the middle, that's okay. It's your creation and you can do it however you want. No two will ever look exactly the same. And look, even my own that I did 
the other time doesn't look exactly the same as this one because even I won't be able to stitch it exactly the same every single time. So if yours looks different than mine, that's okay. It's because it's yours, not mine. All right, we're just splitting the strands almost to the end. right through there. And then the last thing we do to finish it is I'm going to come up from the back so I have to find the middle, which can be kind of hard. It's okay if you have trouble with it. I'm going to try to find the middle of where that stitch was. And I'm going to come up through it. Okay. And if you don't want to do that part, if it feels too hard, you can just finish your stitch the way you had and leave it. That's okay too. Okay. And there, I've done my split stitch. And it's not perfect. It doesn't look perfect and that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is practice. This is us practicing. And at the end, we're gonna have this beautiful rainbow. And rainbows aren't perfect either, so. All right, so we're just weaving this underneath our thread needle, or our thread underneath our other threads. And we're gonna trim it and then we're done. So our next stitch is with our blue thread and we're going to do two stitches with our blue thread so we're going to start and we're going to do this one and then we're going to start doing our cloud so we're going to start with our stem stitch and we just need to get our four rows of thread so we have enough two, one two three four okay and then I'm just gonna, and you can tell because there's kind of like a little, a little bump in them from being inside that little thing. And each one of those little bumps, is kind of one section. And then we need four of them to get us our length we need. And then we're gonna do our splitting of our strands again. This part. You have to have a lot of patience for so if you need to pause the video and come back that's okay too now would be the time to pause meet us back here when you're on your strand and there we go we're ready to stitch so we are going to start with our split stitch and then i'm going to show you how to do the back stitch for I'm going to show you how to do the back stitch for your cloud. So the split stitch is going to start right here on our corner. If you want to do one row, you can start in the center or at the top or at the bottom, whichever one you want. But we're going to do like this. And our split stitch is one stitch forward. And then we're going forward at the back again. So we're moving forward, pulling that to the front so it makes a stitch at the back. And then we're gonna go back and instead of splitting our stitches like we did the last time where we went through it, we're just gonna go right beside it and almost underneath of it, okay? Sometimes we have to pull this up, pull it back down at the back to make our stitches lay flat that's okay. And then we're going to go forward one and then we're going to go beside it. Right beside it. So you're going right there. Okay. Forward one stitch and then beside. forward and beside. side. 
And then if you really want, you want to try to tuck it in behind, so underneath. So you're not going right beside it, you're going like right into it, so kind of underneath of it if you can. Almost under it. You can tuck it under it even better. If you're beside it, that's okay too. But the, you kind of want to try to tuck it underneath of it. So pushing inside. Pushing in there. So it kind of tucks behind. there you go and now what we're going to do since we've hit where our cloud is we're going to actually stitch our cloud and then when we get back up here we're going to come back and stitch the other half and then stitch our cloud and then we're done since we're using all the same color we don't we can just do it like that and then it's kind of like a straight row so this one is called a back stitch so it's very similar to stuff we've been doing, but it's a really um, strong, sturdy, straight stitch. So your back stitch, you're gonna start right here along your row, and you're gonna do one stitch. And a stitch length is actually probably about the length or the width of your um, little rainbow rows. And then we're gonna go to this corner and you're going the same way you were before. You're going forward one stitch. So forward one stitch. And then instead of like a running stitch where you would just keep going forward, you're going to stitch back. You did that with your split stitch. You did that with your stem stitch. You're just going to stitch back. And it covers that space. And then you have to stitch forward on the next one. So you're kind of skipping over where you'd stitched before. You're coming forward one stitch length and then stitching back and meeting up where that other one ended, right? And the same here, I'm gonna go forward a little, forward one stitch and then meeting back, filling in that space so that it's all covered. So forward here and then meeting back and down. Forward and back, meeting in that corner and going all the way around your cloud. I'm gonna probably start to need some more thread soon. So just remembering you don't want to go all the way till you're out of thread. You want to wait. You want to go back down and tie it off when you have about one needle's length left. So if you need to get more thread, you can just pause me and come back. I'm getting close to that. But we're just working our way around along this line. So if you have to, you look at the back and you find where to come up. Because I've been doing this for so long, I can kind of tell where to come back up without looking at the back the whole time. And that's okay too. But that guideline, you can see it from the back so you can turn it over and look. And then, oh, I've only got one, just over a needle left, length left. So I'm gonna tie mine off now. I don't wanna wait any longer. So I'm gonna run it underneath, underneath again. And I don't know, can I make it through my loop? Oh, it looks like I can. If you can't get it through, you can just run it underneath the stitches again and tighten it three to four times around the other stitches and trim it off. It creates it sturdy enough that you don't have to go straight through that loop. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab more thread and I'll meet you back. Okay, I'm back. So I'm just gonna stitch forward a little. Just picking up right where I left off. Back down through. And then forward along my line. Right back down through.
Okay, if you want to work your way around here, you can go all the way around. We'll meet back up when we finish here and I'll see you then. You can pause the video until you're done at the cloud and then we'll meet back up when we're finished. Okay, I am almost done. I'm just coming to this last corner, doing my last stitch to finish it. Okay. All right. So my cloud is done. I've got a little bit of thread still left on my needle. So I'm going to keep going and start on my next stitch. If you need to get more thread, you can pause me and then we'll start again in a minute with another row of our stem stitch. If you're not doing your stem stitch again, if you're just doing one row, then you can jump, you can tie off, you can wrap your needle, cut it off and start on your back stitch over here. So we're going to do another row of our stem stitch. We're just going to come up right next to our other stitches. And then we're doing the same thing. We're just hopping back and going right beside it. Okay. Stitching in right beside and kind of tucked underneath. Oh, am I out of thread yet? I got maybe one stitch left before I've got to tie off my back. Okay, so we're stitching into it and now I'm gonna get more thread and I'll meet you back. You can continue on your stitch if you want and I'll meet you at the end. Oops. Okay, I'm just picking up where I left off and this one because you stitch back, you're going forward a little bit and then stitching right back into the underneath. And we're almost done. We're going to finish off by stitching back and then down through the underneath. And then that finishes off that stitch. And then you can come up over here and go back into your back stitch. So what we're going to do is we're just going to all stitch our back stitch and then we'll meet back when we're done and we'll work on our next stitch. But we all have seen the back stitch, so I'm going to let you work on that yourself. So you can pause the video and then we'll come back when we're done this cloud. Okay, we have officially finished our back stitch. If you're not done, pause the video and then when you finish your other side of your cloud, you can come back to me and we'll start on the next one. So our next stitch is going to be for these little dots. So you've got a blue one, pink one, light pink one, and a yellow one. And we're just going to show you, I'm going to show you one in the blue because that's what I have on my needle right now. And you should probably have that still on your needle. Um, I'll go back and I'll do the other ones after. But since you've got your blue color on your needle right now, we can go ahead and do this one. <clears throat> so traditionally a French knot is a little different than this but it's really hard to do so for this stitch sample I'm going to show you a different variation of what would be called a French knot and I'll direct you to a little video if you want to learn a real French knot later but right now we're going to try this one because I think it gives you an opportunity to be a little bit more successful so we're going to come up from the back of our fabric over on the one side of our little circle so pick a side and go on it and then we're going to stitch down to the other side of our little circle. I'm just going to create a tiny little stitch. <clears throat> Your next step is to come up on one side of that stitch, right in the middle. You're going to come up through it. And then we are going to go underneath of that stitch. So under... The stitch we created and before our little loop closes 
we're gonna do the same thing we do when we do the tie off on the back of our thread or on the back of our knot when we're tying. We're gonna go through this loop. So as it goes there, you're gonna go through the loop <clears throat> with your needle and pull down. So it's gonna create kind of this little bump, this little bump. And you wanna get it nice and tight down so that your thought, like your loop is pulled closed. And then you're gonna stitch onto the other side of that hole and just go over, okay? And as you close that, it's gonna kind of pull your knot down. And you're creating a tiny little knot ball to cover your dots. So that is one of them. You can jump over here. I'm gonna do this one over here just for another example. We have our blue. We're gonna pop one side of our knot or circle and stitch down onto the other side of our circle. And then we're gonna come up at the top of our circle, bring our needle through, and then the next step is to go under our circle. And then after we've gone under our circle, we don't pull tight, we go through the loop, okay? And then we pull our loop tight down. So our loop is now pulled closed. And then we're gonna stitch onto the bottom. And then we pull it tight and it closes into like a little dot. Okay. So you don't have to finish the little knots right now, but we'll go back to them once we're done when we're on those other parts. Okay. So we're just tying off our back and we're going to take our thread and we're going to get our yellow again. So you might still have three strands of your yellow, or you might need to start and get some more. But if you have any left, you can use it and just put it back on your needle. Or we're gonna get more and I'll meet you back here when we have more thread. Okay, next up, we are gonna move on to our little peace sign. And the next stitch we're gonna learn is called the satin stitch. So we're gonna start with the yellow and then we'll finish our border of our peace sign at the end. And you get to choose what stitch you wanna use on your peace sign. You've learned all of these stitches that can be used on the outside and you'll get to decide which one you wanna use. And um, we can do that together. You can go back and watch the video if you need to watch the part to do the stitch you wanna do or you can follow the stitch that I'll choose to do. Okay. So we're gonna do our satin stitch with our yellow. And a satin stitch is basically a really long stitch that covers an area. So we're gonna start in the corner and we just go from one corner to the other corner. So you wanna kinda go on a bit of a straight line and then you're going to the next spot to fill it in. So imagine you're just kinda coloring in a space. So I'm gonna go to this corner and I'm just gonna pull it flat down and cover that first spot. And then we're gonna go back up. We're gonna go right next to it. Oops. Okay, so I got a weird little loop happening. So how do I fix something like that? I'm gonna to go to the back and I'm gonna pull my thread back up, try to fix what's happening. Cause something got a little twisted and I don't know what it is. We just slow down and we try again. There we go. Okay, and we're just kind of following the line. And then we're just following the line of the blue outline. So we're just kind of following, we're just filling in this space. Just a stitch length apart, just go in side by side, straight down, filling it in. And you're gonna get to this corner and you're still gonna have a little bit there. So you gotta go a little shorter stitches to fill it in. 
a little shorter there. And then you filled in one corner and then you can do this one. So it's the same thing. You're just gonna go from one corner to the other and then go beside it. And you're just gonna make your stitches a little shorter, each one from one edge to the other. And typically in a satin stitch, you're kind of following the same direction. So you want them all to go this way, all your stitches. So you're just making a small one. This one, I only needed three and then it covered the whole yellow part. So we'll go over to this one too and see if we can do it in three stitches too. <clears throat> and then a shorter one just from right there down to the bottom. And that fills it in enough. You could do one more teeny little one in the corner if I wanted to, but I think I'm going to leave it. Sometimes too much makes it look too crowded because my outline's going to cover that. So we're just doing, oops. Just doing side by side stitches to fill in yellow okay And you might be behind me, you might not be up where I am and that's okay too, you can pause the video and then come back or you can just pause it after. It's okay if you're behind me, you don't have to be at the same pace as I am. Okay, so I've got that last corner part and now I I'm done my satin stitch. If you are still working on your satin stitch, you can pause the video and then come back when you're done and we'll do our outline. And I think I'm gonna pick the split stitch for my outline. So I'll see you back in just a second and we'll get blue onto our thread when you're done your satin stitch and I'll meet you back. Okay, so you now should have blue thread on your needle. If you don't, just take a second and pause the video and get your blue thread and then I'll come back. So we're gonna fill the circle around the outside and these lines and I decided that for mine, I wanna use the split stitch. If you wanna use a different stitch, so either the back stitch, the stem stitch, the split stitch, the chain stitch or the running stitch, you can choose any stitch you want. So that's totally up to you. I'm gonna do mine in the split stitch and you can do the same if you wanna just follow along or you can do whichever stitch you want. So I'm gonna stitch down. You can jump back and just check the tutorial for that one and go back to that part of the video and just do that on here. But. For the split stitch, we just stitch forward and then come back down through our stitch. And we're just gonna do that all the way around.
So you're just gonna go all the way around the circle, not stopping at those openings. We're just gonna do the circle part first. We'll be coming all the way around. And at this point, you know what to do. If you need more thread, you're gonna have to just stop, put more thread on your needle, and then restart the same way. So when we come up to the top here, we've got where they're meeting. We're just going to stitch down through there. And then we're going to come back up through our split stitch like we did to end it. And we can just go down at the end of the other one and you're done your chain. So I need to tie off because I need more thread. So I'm just gonna quickly do that, put my needle. I didn't leave a ton, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do my loop. I'm just gonna tack it underneath my other stitches, just push it underneath the other stitches and then clip it. And I'm gonna grab more thread and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so we've got, I've got more thread. So the next thing we need to do is I need to do the little line. So I'm going to do the straight line down the middle first, and then I'm going to do these two sides. So if you're not where I'm at, you can pause the video and you can finish the circle part and then meet me back here. But if you are, we're just going to go right down the center. And we're just going to do our split stitch. So I'm coming up and then going right back down through the center of my stitch. And another one down through the middle. And again. And then you got one more through the center there. And then we can just kind of Come up right here and then go down again. Okay, so you've got your center and then we can start at the top and do the same thing here. You only need a couple of stitches. You can do, but this is our split stitch. So we're gonna go through the middle. Right there. And then to your other side, go one, come up, down the middle, and then your last one, go right down the center. Okay, and you have got a finished little peace sign. So we're gonna do what we do best and we're gonna tie off our little thread at the back because we're gonna move on to our heart. So wrapped around once, wrapped around twice, through the loop or just around a couple times and we can snip our end. Okay, so we're gonna grab this darker pink. I actually have a little bit left from the first row we did. So I'm gonna put that on my needle and then I'll meet you back here when you've done that. If you're not at that point, just finish up your peace sign and then we'll see you when you're done the peace sign with your pink on your thread. Okay, so we are now gonna move on to our heart. We've got our dark pink on our thread or on our needle. If you don't, you can take a minute and pause, that's okay, and come back, but we're gonna get started on this heart. So you'll see there's little dots on the outside of the heart, and those are gonna be kind of like your little guidelines. So they're really light, just enough that you can see them, hopefully. And you're gonna start in the center at the top, and you're gonna come 
up through that first very, very middle hole. And you're gonna go down to the very bottom through the very middle hole in the bottom, okay? That's your first hole to start at. So we're gonna get that one nice and flat. And then the next one is your next hole right here beside it. Okay, you're gonna go all the way on this side. We're going this way. And then it goes across to the hole next to that one on the other side. So there's a little hole or a little dot right here. And we're gonna go down through that one. So as you can see, you're going one hole to the side on both sides and you're gonna go all the way around like that until you're done. So the next one is right here. You can see a little dot. You can go that one and then you'll go to the next one on the bottom, which is right there. Okay, and then back up again to the next one and across to there. And then back up to the next one and across to right there. So it's the same thing all the way around. This one right here, all the way across to this one over here. This one over here, all the way across to that one over there. And there is a match for each one, okay? But I'm actually already out of thread, so I'm gonna have to tie mine off. I'm gonna do the same thing I always do. I'm gonna put it underneath. I'm gonna do two times underneath, and then I'm gonna do one more, three times, maybe one more because I just wanna be real secure because I was too short to tie my knot. I did too short, sometimes happens. Okay, one second, I'm just gonna get more thread and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my new thread and I'm gonna start back on this side where I left off. So I'm going back through my next hoop and then to the next dot next to my last stitch. So it is kind of connect the dots. look for the next dot and this one sometimes gets it gets a little tighter in there so you can kind of pull your thread down so that you can make sure you can see you're gonna go to this one and then over to the top one and then i know it's gonna almost cover that one but you know it's there so you're gonna take your needle go through the bottom one and then you're back up at the top again and you're gonna go down through that spot right there and you've created like this little crossover heart that's really cute and the last step to this is you can do a back stitch around the outside so we're not going to start um or we are going to start right in the center there you can see if you push your needle up or right in the middle and then we're going to stitch pretty much to the hole again so you're just going to do one little stitch and this is nice because it shows you you have a guide for exactly where so you're going to go to where the top of the stitch meets. I'm just gonna go like this and down through like a little, the back stitch that we did around our cloud. So the whole same spot where the dot was, you're just gonna go through it and then around and we're just outlining our little heart. Okay, I'm going to get you to pause the video and we'll, I'll actually go all the way to the bottom and then we'll pause and meet at the very top. We're 
go in all the way around. So when you get to the bottom, you're going to want to go right through that center one, right through that one, go down to match up, and then you're coming up right over here. So at the bottom, on the next one, you're just on the other side. Around. Using those same dots that were there to show us where to do each stitch. All right, and as we come into this corner, it's a little more crowded than we're maybe used to. So you're just trying to follow along the inside there. Just stitching around. We'll just finish off our little back with a little loop and then we're done. So we're going to move on to our flower now and we're going to start with our pink, our light pink. And then if you want to get that onto your needle now and then come back when you're ready, I will meet you back here to stitch that pink flower. So we're going to work on our flower now. I'm going to show you one petal and then I'm going to get you to work on each petal on your own and then we'll finish the center together after we're done all of our petals. So we're going to take our pink thread and we're going to start right in the center of the top of one of our flower petals. And then you're going to come straight down through the center, stopping in the middle. And we're going to go up to the side. It doesn't matter which side, but I'm going to start on the left and I'm going to go right back down beside it. So it's just similar to our satin stitch that we did here on our peace sign, but it's a little bit of a different shape because some parts of our petal are rounded at the top. So we're just meeting down at the bottom and following the side of our petal and coming into the bottom. Okay, and then you're gonna jump back over to your right side of their center stitch and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So you're gonna come down as close to your middle stitch as you can. It's going to come all the way down into the center. And you're doing the same thing beside it. Right down beside your last stitch until you've covered your whole petal. You can do a little one at the side too if you want, but just until you've covered it. And then your petal is all done. And then we're gonna finish out the center with a satin stitch. And I'll meet you back when you've finished all of your petals. So you can pause the video now and I'll see you 
in a few minutes. Now that we finished our flower, we're going to do our middle center in a satin stitch with yellow. If you don't have this thread on your needle yet, just pause the video and come back when you're ready. Otherwise, we're gonna start on our satin stitch. So you're just picking a point in the center of your circle to come up. So I'm just gonna go right in the middle from the top. And I'm gonna do one line straight across. And you're just doing that little line across. And then right beside it, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna do another little line across. And you're just gonna do those same straight lines we did on here until we filled in our circle. So you probably need about three or four, three stitches on each side of the circle. And then you're gonna be all done your flower. And some of your stitches might be a little shorter because the side of your circle isn't as big as the center of your circle. And that's so just going from one side to the other until you filled it in. And once you're done filling in your circle, we've finished our flower. And we can, you can pause me until you're done that and then we'll move on to the next thing. The only step we have left, and if you have not completed it, or maybe you've already done it because I did show it once earlier in this video, is our little dots. So since I still have some yellow thread, I'm going to work on this yellow dot and then I'll have to do my pinks and my dark pick if you didn't already do those before. So for your little dots, you're gonna come up on one side of your dot and then stitch across to the other side of your dot, making like a tiny little line. And when we get through that tiny little line, we're just gonna do another stitch that comes up at the top of that little line, just above it. And then we're gonna put our needle underneath the line. So just through it underneath and we're gonna pull our thread through. And as our thread is coming through, we're gonna create that loop that we do. And this thread, this needle will go through the loop. Through the loop and it'll close down at the fabric. And then you wanna stitch down through the bottom of the circle. So we've come up at all four sides of our circle. And then when we come down, it creates a little ball. And there you go, you've done another one of your little dots. Okay, so you're all done your embroidery. And the next thing to do is decide what you wanna do with it when you're finished. So you can come up with a really creative idea and do whatever you want. You can do it all how you decide to display it. But here are two options. One of them, you can just close the back, pull the fabric into the back, and I'll show you on the, the first tutorial how to do this one. And then it hangs inside of your little hoop, like a display. Or if you wanna use your hoop again for something else and you don't wanna use that, you can um, use this little cardboard and turn it into a little hanger so that you can just hang it on the wall or you can make it long and then you can hang it on your doorknob of your bedroom or something fun like that. Um, but this is just using a piece of cardboard and then wrapping it around the back. So you can choose one of these two options or you can come up with something totally unique on your own and you can decide. But I hope you had fun creating this and I'll show you the, these two options in the next two tutorials and you can choose which one you'd like. So if you have your thread on your needle, you're ready to go. If not, you can pause the video and just get that done and then meet me back. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start, you're gonna flip your hoop over and you've got all this fabric around the back and we're just gonna stitch in to our fabric so that our thread comes right there. And then we're just gonna take nice big stitches 
like our running stitch. It's a little hard because sometimes we get looped on that hook at the top. But we're just gonna take big in and out stitches into the edge. So onto the back, then around to the front, from the back to the front, back to front, back to front. Oops, got looped. Okay, and we're just going around back to front, back to front. All the way around and you can make pretty big stitches if you want they don't have to be but you're just following the circle part all the way around and if you start to run out of thread you can do a little thing trick and you can actually pull your thread and it's gonna start to close the back and that'll actually give you more thread to get all the way around so after two stitches, you can give it a little pull and then keep going into, so from one side to the other, moving around our circle, around, and then when we get back all the way to the top, we're going to meet back up with our line that was already there and we're going to pull like this and it's just going to make our fabric fold in. Okay, and then we've got our fabric folded in for the most part, and then your stitch that's there already, so you've already got one stitch that you can see, you're going to loop that around that stitch, and then you're going to loop it around a stitch over here, okay, looped it around two stitches, loop it around. Okay, I'm pulling it tight so that it's closing it. And then once you're all done looping it, so you've done two loops, it's gonna feel nice and tight. You can go like this, so we've got it looped. And then you can take it and go through your loop. You're done, it's nice and tight. You've got it looped took enough times to stop it from coming undone and then you can clip it. And then if you ever wanna take it out, you all you have to do is just clip that fabric and the whole thing, all the thread will come out. And so you can actually hang this on your wall with the little hook and it's all done. Okay, so now the second option for closing your hoop is if you have your hoop and you wanna take some extra fabric that you have and all the floss you have left, the thread you have left, and you wanna kind of practice and play around with that, but you wanna use your hoop, this is my um, idea for you so that you can continue to use the hoop, but you can also display your picture that you made. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the inside part of our hoop, we're gonna go like this, and we're just gonna trace the inside of our hoop onto a piece of cardboard. And if you're anything like my kids, you know exactly where to find the cardboard in the house to do a craft. So you're gonna take that little inside hoop and you're gonna trace inside of it, okay? So make a big circle and then we're gonna cut it out. And this can be hard to do, but I bet you if you're anything like my kids, you have cut a lot of cardboard in your life. So you're gonna be able to cut this circle out pretty easily. If you can find a piece of cardboard that doesn't have a bunch of writing on at least one side of it, that's gonna be best because you want your cardboard to not show through whatever's on the back. And so then what we're gonna do is you will do a little running stitch all the way around the outside of it, okay? Around the outside of the blue circle. So you're gonna stitch a big circle around the outside, starting with a little knot and then stitch it all the way around. And when you're done that, you can come back to the video. So just stitch a nice circle. So the running stitch is the very first one we did on our rainbow. So it's one stitch in and all the way around our circle. And when you're all done, you can come back and they can show you what's next.
So after you've done that, the next thing to do is lay your cardboard on the back and you can fold these pieces over a little bit so that it's all folded in. And then you're gonna pull your string, your thread that's left. I'm just gonna give it a tug, okay? And as it pulls, it's gonna pull all that fabric tight around your cardboard. And then when you flip it over, you've got your little cardboard on here. So now instead of being in your hoop, it's just on a piece of cardboard. And then you can take your thread and create a little loop at the top. Stitch through your fabric right at the top at the middle. Create one stitch there. Okay. And if you want to, you can always glue this um, down to your cardboard, but then it's permanent. So if you don't wanna glue it, if you don't want it to always be there. So once we've stitched our little stitch at the top, we can take a loop like this and stitch another loop. Hold it like that so that your loop doesn't come through and then stitch through there again, putting your needle through the loop and creating a little knot. So pushing it from one side to the other through the fabric, okay? And then through your loop, and you might have to ask an adult for help with this one, and you're just creating a knot and then you can trim off that thread and you can hang it on your wall.